Dave's Vault, my fellow gamers. Here, we're going to talk about some, some nameless stuff and something I like to call uh, assembly line paint jobs. Okay, so here we did, you know, assembly type instructions. I talked to you about acrylic bases and about how to keep them crystal clear. Here the model is very complete, very crystal clear stand. Uh, I just finished varnish coating the nasty little eye and the tentacles up in the front. So it's not a too terrible, awesome paint job, but it's enough to get, you know, the nasty little gribbly across to you that he's, he's out to do you no good. So, <clears throat> pardon, I have a bit of a, a cold, an actual cold. They still exist amid all the COVID and craziness that's going on in the world. A cold still exists, and they are, in my opinion, more terrible than COVID. Mm, they hit me hard. COVID was a breeze. This is, is bad. So anyway, these guys are done. Uh, and it took a while to think about what kind of color scheme I wanted. Because... You know, I live here in the south in Virginia, and when you cook a crab, it turns from the beautiful blue, white, a little bit of green, to bright red or orange, okay? So the paint job that the British people came up with is a little crazy. Uh, it's just like they're all dead crabs walking, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say. And I wanted a living thing, but they're also kind of gribbly and nasty looking they're not technically evil or anything but you know as long as you keep messing with them they're gonna mess with you back so i decided to just go with a black uh, carapace with the green skin <clears throat> once i figured that out which actually took a lot longer than what you guys might think i was actually thinking about painting them the pretty blue going to the white uh, shell pattern that you know here the chesapeake bay blue crab have or we just call it blue crab. <clears throat> Apologies. <clears throat> so, anyway. Uh, the skin, actually, took a little bit of doing. And I use a mix of variety, variety, variety of paints. So here, <clears throat> I'm rocking the old Walmart Apple Barrel brand. But if you see, on top of the lids, okay, so, right here, the nameless skin tone. This is the base coat that I use, called Kelly Green. Okay. Then the first initial dry brush, nameless skin. And that's going to be that crisp green. And then the second nameless skin dry brush, which is the lightest that I go with it, a spring green. Pretty light. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a mountain of Games Workshop paint, Citadel paint, uh, P3 paint, Vallejo paint. I have tons of Vallejo uh, airbrush, you know, model air paint. So, but I find that these, <clears throat> pardon, these are the lazy man's way out. Uh, I do have one of these nifty little jobs, palette, and I do mix my own uh, paint, you know, frequently, but I'd like to mitigate that as much as possible. That's why I go and buy these 99 cents a piece. You got the color there. And actually these are good paints because they have a light pigment count. You know, uh, it takes several thin coats to get the pigment to shine through. And that builds up good brush practice. So instead of going and getting one of these Citadel paints and having to water it down to get the consistency that you want, and you're spending $8 now on these, stupid. Go out and get these bad boys. You know, the low pigment count already makes it to where it's, it's what you need it to be, actually. So you keep putting those thin coats on it gives you good brush practice and in my opinion it's the economic choice that makes you a hero so okay 
we came down to <clears throat> to this. I really wanted to get these guys done. I painted the bases. I'm like, ugh, I got to get the models done. So I got the models done. Now I can take this color scheme and translate it to the rest of the force. And actually, it's going to be much easier than these little flying griblies were. Uh, because now I know what I'm doing and how I want to execute it. I have my minimum palette. And I don't have many colors here. It may look like a bunch. Uh, but basically, you're just going to take the, the base coats and go with it. So green, purple, black, a little bit of reddish orange, and then the bone color for the nails. That's it. That's it. A simple palette, but it's enough. It's varied. It's more than three colors that you need. And here, I got these bad boys because who doesn't like the inkers? They're just awesome looking little, little terrible things. So, <clears throat> all I did is I started out very, very simply. I always start with the base. Uh, because you get to, you paint the color around it, you dry brush it. And that's what I do. I get this, this dry brush look here. And that gets a little messy, especially when you get close to the model. So you don't want to have a fully painted model and then do the base. It's just something that I do. Other people will build the base separately and the model separately, paint the model on some goofy thing that they hold. I don't know. I've built up my muscles to be able to hold a model like this and paint around it pretty good. Uh, other people, I guess, they need to feel like they're holding on to something yeah, I, I don't know like yeah you gotta hold on to it and then paint on top of that this is a lot of people do it <clears throat> whatever floats your daggone boat helps you sleep at night but i actually hold my model and paint my model in one piece it's what works for me so i start with the base and then you go from the innermost layer so i did the mouth and i did the same with all these guys all their mouths are painted Okay, and that's all subject to change. You know, I'm gonna have to add paint here, take paint away. But <clears throat> these guys, now that I know what color I'm gonna go with the army for coherency, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit those skin tones in the three types. Hit it with a with a wash of the earth shade. Get my tint to cool, paint it up all purpley and gross. Get my eye. There's there's one little eye over here. Get that thing painted up, the red with some orange on it, and then get my teeth painted. And this little gribbly will be done, like, and it'll be nasty in good times. Uh, instead of, because they're kind of, they all just look nasty, nasty and gelatinous and whatnot. I might hit the entire model with <clears throat> what I use is the hard coat. So. It's basically gloss varnish, or some people try to market it as water effects. It's gloss varnish. But I might hit the whole dude with that. You know. We'll see. But what I'm going to do is for each coat, just go do one coat of the nameless skin tone. Boom. And I'm going to paint all three guys with this nameless skin tone. Then I'm going to move on to the next coat. The first dry brush. All three are going to get dry brushed. Second coat. Boom. Third coat. Boom. And it's all going to happen just like that. In order. So Henry Ford's uh, production line. The assembly line. The industrial revolution is what I'm applying to paint jobs as well. It gets stuff done fast. Especially these little bitty ones that are pretty daggone easy to do. <clears throat> so they're going to be very fast and it's how you can crank out an army really quickly too especially like orcs and goblins or undead with you know the bones and stuff they can really crank out armies very very fast using this method uh, and another another thing <clears throat> the reason why I write on top of lids like this it's not because I'm stupid, okay? It's because I'm human. And what happens, especially with gamers, is we have this shiny toy syndrome, shiny new toy syndrome. So you'll be in the middle of painting an army, 
and then something else will come out for a different army and you'll buy that assemble it paint it up you cool and that will domino out in an effect so what will happen eventually is you'll get back to these dusty models that are half-assed painted and you will be like what was i using what color was i using oh my gosh i see that it's green and i see that the variations have come up that there's all kinds of different uh highlights and stuff that i used but what paint did i use Let's see boom there you go nameless skin tone it's right there uh, it's not going to go anywhere i'm not going to wash this off i'm not going to rub it off and my normal human self will go back to this paint pot and i'll be like that's what i used let's start painting these guys again that's exactly what's going to happen you guys know it you know you go through life maybe you paint up a whole bunch of stuff and then you're like okay burn out on painting let's video game it up and then you're stuck in uh, skyrim for about three months i do it so <clears throat> yeah then you gotta you gotta figure out what paint you're using so just pro tip write down your your skin tones and whatnot for a specific uh, little group of griblies uh, i do plan on getting these guys painted up because you know, i do, really don't play anymore i'm not an active gamer anymore so anyway you guys take it easy bye, -bye.